Brother Kenny, what's that say? Well, I thank the Lord for his goodness and mercy to me. And I thank him for each of y'all. I've uh, known most of you a long, long time, except for Brother Todd. And I uh, hadn't known him very long, but. You got another name? Uh, tonight, if you would like to turn with me in your Bibles to uh, Isaiah 40 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mine up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and shall walk and not faint. How many people like to wait? Most of us don't like to wait. And I know a lot of times if we go into the grocery store, we may spend an hour in there shopping. But when we get to the checkout, what do we want to do? Get out quick. We want to get out quick. This is the longest line, and you get in the shortest one, and that's the longest one. A lot of times, it'll turn out somebody had to have some cigarettes, or they had to have some change, or something to come up with a check, something they're trying to check out. They got to go all the way to the back of the store and check it out, bring it back, you go. I picked the wrong line. I should have took the longest one. But that's the way it is. And we in a world today, what if we don't want to wait? You get to a stoplight. And it seems like that one, when I come off a of Foreman Bundy Road, I hardly ever hit green. Most of the time, it's red, or it will turn red before I get there, or it's green, and it'll change before I get there. But most of the time, I have to wait. And I'm sitting there wanting it to hurry up because I want to get there and go on. And the same thing is we're right on the road and we're driving and somebody passes us and they get to the light and you're right on behind them. They can't wait. We're in a world where we want everything microwavable. We want it fast. Stick it in there two or three minutes. But it don't always work that way. And sometimes we have to wait on God. And it sometimes is hard. Have you ever prayed for something? You didn't get it today. You didn't get it tomorrow. You didn't get it next year. And it can be years sometimes before you get the answer that you've been waiting for. Sometimes God says yes. Sometimes he says no. And sometimes he says what? Wait. That's the hard part. You rather hear the yes or the no than that word wait because you know it's going to be a while. But in here it talks about they that wait. That means God's children if we will wait upon the Lord. Okay, and who is he? Now some people, they look to Mahali. And some people look to this one. That one, Buddha, and whoever. But who are we talking about? God, Jehovah, the maker of this world. We shall wait upon the Lord. You know, you can try to get people sometimes to do things that you know you're supposed to be waiting for God to move to get it done. But we want to hurry up and get it done. So then it says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall what? Renew. Renew their strength. What's it mean? What happens when your strength gets renewed? You get revived? You ever been outside cutting grass and you got thirsty and you went and get that cool drink of water? You ever happened to your brother Todd and you drink that glass of water and all of a sudden it feels like in just five minutes you got more energy than you had. You ever been through it? All of a sudden, you feel revi revived. To get renewed, you know how that feeling is when you get renewed about something? Mm -hmm. You get that assurance <laughs> from God that everything's going to be all right. To cause to flourish again. 
Now I'm one of the worst people in the world for planting flowers, and then they sitting there waiting for me to give them a drink of water. Ooh. I have done better this year, believe <laughs> me or not. Some of them that I didn't know would be anywhere, it's way up here. Which Mother Nature probably had a lot to do with that. <laughs> but if I can just do what I'm supposed to do, if I will water those flowers like I'm supposed to, even if it doesn't rain, they'll still grow. Mm -hmm. But I have something that I have to do. And you know, God is waiting for us to call on Him, mm -hmm. to get answers from Him, because He always wants us to call on Him. Mm -hmm. He's waiting for us to pay Him attention. Sometimes we don't give him the attention that he needs or he deserves. But he's waiting for us to give him attention. It means that the people of God who trust in him shall become strong in faith. What is faith? God's one word is faith. Yeah. Faith is the substance of things yeah. hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You can't see it. Mm -hmm. And I know I've used this many times in this church. When I was a kid growing up, my daddy worked over here in Elizabeth City at the lumber mill. And about every day he, he would go to work, when he come home, he would have candy for us. Me, my mom, and my brother. And I remember one day in particular, I thought about that candy, by what time it might be getting to. So I go to the kitchen one day and I ask mama, what time is it? I was not there, I knew my daddy was soon be home, Lord willing. And then I might go back again and ask, Mama, what time is it? And sure enough, when my daddy got there, he might have a box of goobers or a box of raisin nuts or anybody remember the seven up bars, seven different kinds of candy, <laughs> something like that. Well, that to me is what faith is. You're waiting for something to happen. You don't see it, but you got an expectation that's going to happen. Well, that is the way it is with God. We know we need something. And sometimes it's want something. But it's needs that we really need to carry to Him. And then expect that answer. Go looking for it, just like I did for my daddy to come home and bring that candy. When you pray, trust God to bring the answer. And I guarantee you, if you pray and you wait, and trust him, he'll bring the answer. Amen. It might not be the answer you want, but he'll bring the answer. Because you know, sometimes the things that we want is all, not always the things we need. It's not always the things that are good for us, but God knows what's good for us. So, when we trust God, we're able to overcome the obstacles that come against us in our life. Now, Brother Kevin, he said something about lunches. What are you doing? Like, what you? What is it? What you got on you? Like I had drunk something else. You know. But see, Brother Kevin, I'm tell you what happened. Uh, Friday morning, I was in a place, and something happened that I got hurt emotionally. Well, I went through the day all day Friday. I will admit, I was broken. I was really hurt and broken. I went through Friday night, I felt the same way. I got up yesterday morning, I went to a Glow International meeting, and the lady that spoke, spoke the word that I needed. And after I heard the word, and I received what God had for me, Little by little, I began to feel better. By last night, I had come out of it. By the time I got to church this morning, I felt like worshiping the Lord. And that's what happened, Brother Kevin. God touched me. And why? Not anything on my part, but because I waited on Him. And when He came through, I accepted what He had for me. And I told that lady, I said, that message was for me if for nobody else because it's what I needed at the time. 
And God will bring us up and he'll bring us out of every situation. You know, well, sometimes that they get that saying, it came to pass. I used not to get that. But I knew, I grasped what it mean, meant, and I know what it means. It came to pass. Something comes and it passes, and you go on. It came to pass. It's gone. It's passed by. So God will renew our strength if only we will trust in him. They shall mine up with wings as eagles. Every child of God will be lifted and sustained by God's Holy Spirit. But what we got to do? Wait. But we will mine up with wings as eagles. We will be high flyers like an eagle. You know, I was reading up on this. And it says that an eagle, they call him a bird, can go as high as 30,000 feet. I never knew that. And then I was looking up about the airplanes, how high they could go, and a passenger plane can go anywhere between 30,000 and 47,000 feet. And I was sitting and thinking about this, and I was thinking about, you know, that eagle can fly as high as the minimum of a passenger plane, and he's got no gas and no power engines. He don't have two crew members. He don't have to have all that, but yet he can go up as high as 30,000 feet. That blew my mind. And I could just imagine him just soaring around. It, it just amazed me that they could fly that high. And then I read where an eagle, when an eagle is chased by an enemy, it heads towards the sun. And you know what I got thinking about, bro, Kenny? When the devil's after me, who should I head towards? The sun, S-O-N. He heads towards the sanctuary. I need to head Amen. towards the S-O-N, the sun. And you know what? It says that when the enemy is pursuing him and he's going ahead, he's going towards the sun, that enemy turns back. Mm -hmm. And what does the word that tells us? Draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. You got to do that first. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So when you going towards the S-O-N sun, the devil gets nervous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is it they used to say? The devil gets nervous when he sees the weakest sinner on their knees. Mm -hmm. So we need to what? Pursue after the S-O-N. And you know, it also says that an eagle's eyes is eight times sharper than that of a man. Now, I didn't know all this. I had to look it up. He can see. And you know what come to me? The church needs discernment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sharp eye. We're talking about in the spiritual now. We need a sharp eye in the S-O-N, the sun, so we know what's going on. You know, a lot of times people say they're confused. Get discernment. You won't be confused. Because we'll know what's going on a lot of times before it takes place. And it also says that when an, the eagle doesn't run from a storm, what do we do sometimes? <laughs> what do I do sometimes? <laughs> Brother Hank, it gets hot. Hide in the closet. Right, hide in the closet. <laughs> sometimes it gets hot, and what do we want to do? Retreat. It's like I did Friday. I was running from the situation. I was feeling sorry for myself. God don't want me feeling sorry for myself. He wants me to trust him. But I did. But he allows the storm to lift him higher. So what does that tell me? When the storms in life comes to me, I'm not supposed to run from them. I'm supposed to face them head on and let each storm be a stepping stone. Learn from it. 
That's what happens. We don't learn from it. We allow it to throw us back. But we can learn from the eagle. So we can just think about how he does. How he does not run from the storm. And you know what? It, it, it makes me think about the uh, the arm of God. Have you have on the hammer of salvation and breastplate of righteousness and feet shod and all this. But you never have anything on your back. That's because we're not supposed to run. We're not supposed to run. We're supposed to face it head on. It's not always easy. I didn't say it was easy, though. It's not easy, but in Jesus Christ we can do it. And then it says, run and not be weary. Means that those that wait upon the Lord will enjoy renewed strength in difficult times. You had a loved one that passed away? I did. My mom. My dad passed. My brother's passed. My nephew's passed. But when my mom passed, it knocked my steps out from under me. That was a hard blood. And it still hurts, but you get adjusted. Yeah, I didn't say you get over it. You get adjusted. But when I look to God, he renews my strength. He knows what our needs are. He knows it so we can run and not be weary. You know, the word teaches us that we're in a race. We're in a race. So we can run and not be weary. And then we can what? Walk and not think the promise of supernatural strength to God's people whenever required no matter what we might be passing through passing through we must be reminded of God's promises to us he is a covenant keeping God what he's promised he will do he will do you know I, I remember when I first got saved I want to tell you a story about the eagles and the eaglets. When I first got saved, I I don't know how, how to explain it, but you just feel like you're in love with everybody and everybody loves you. And you ride on that Clyde for a while. And then all of a sudden you wake up. You know, it ain't, It's not quite like you thought it would be. But God still makes a way for each one of us. But I'm here the story of the eagle, the, I don't know what we call them, daddy and mama or what, but male and female. They b both gathers the sticks to build a nest. And I was studying up on this. Some of these nests can get as big as nine feet big. 12 feet, almost 12 feet, I think, in diameter, and nine feet deep. That's deep. But you know, they say that the both the male and the female gathers the branches and all to build these nests, the twigs. But the mother does more to get it situated. And they put a lot of soft, soft stuff in there like seaweed and um, grass and different little soft stuff to build it up for these little eggs and then babies. And you know, that reminds me of when you first get saved. Everything for a moment feels kind of soft and comfy, you know. And then, as time goes on, they decide that it's time to get them out of nest. And I, when I was thinking about this, I thought about the first time my mama couldn't rock me no more. I always go get in her lap and she would rock me in the rocking chair. And one day she said, honey, you're getting too heavy. Hurt my feelings, but you know, it was hurting her legs more. <laughs> so I knew it was time to quit. But I got adjusted. Well, when it comes time for these little eaglet, eaglets, eaglets, what you call eaglets, to get out of the nest, the mama start pulling that fuzzy stuff out. And it begins to prickle, you know. You know what I mean? And in the spiritual, when you get over that soft time, Things begin to prickle and it begin to hurt and you have to start learning more of what? The word. the word. You have to start praying more. At first you might not pray as much. Then you learn that you need to pray more. And then she'll pull like more until it really gets bad. 
And it's coming time where they have got to get out of the nest. So you know what that mama eagle does? She pushes them out. She pushes them out. And they begin to flutter a little bit. And I don't know how many times she does this. But if she sees they're not going to make it, she flies over and picks them up. And that's the way it is with God. When we start and we begin to fall, he just flies right under us and picks us up. He's a good God. All the time. He's good to me, to you. And then she'll try again. And if it don't quite make it, she'll fly under there and she'll pick it up. Fly it around on her back. Turn it back to the nest. But one day, something happens. She gets him out there, or her, whichever, and she pushes him out, and she curves him out there, and he begins to flow real good. And she says, now nah, he's on his own. Oh. Now nah, she's on her own. And they begin to fly, and one day, they begin to, to soar that 30,000 feet. And that's the way it is in our life. Sometimes it's hard. And we just flickle, and he has to pick us up and carry us. But then we get to that place one day when we can fly on our own again. And it, it makes me go back to that thought about how he takes care of us. He watches after us. He cares about us. And then I wrote down it says, it said nine things about the eagle. First, they have amazing eyesight. Where we've been through that. Hey, they can see so much better than a human can. They make for life. How about that one? They don't, you know, they made for life. They build enormous nests, some of them 12 feet in diameter and 9 feet deep. They don't have to eat every day. I haven't learned that yet. <laughs> I think that's what they call fasting in the church when you don't eat every day. So I guess the eagles fast. I'm not good at fasting. So, but they don't need to eat every day. They're mostly feathers. Now, that surprised me. I did not know that eagles was mostly feathers, but they are. And, you know, they talked about the bald eagle. They said there's no bald eagle. They get a white head and a white tail after so many years, but they're not bald. Now, when I had chemo, I got bald. And you too. But they are not bald. And they say that the sign they make in the movies is different from the real sign of an eagle. You know, when they got them on TV in these movies, they got them, you know, saying really strong and heavy. But they say they're not like that. They're more whippier sign than that. I didn't know that. So I know when I see one on TV, I know better. They're resilient. You know, they talk about it like that with children. You know, kids can be like playing. And they can get mad with their neighbor, kid. Anybody been through that? Mm -hmm. They can get mad and go home and tell mama, cry oh, alone. <laughs> they don't know nothing about it. And then you ask the next day, can I go see some? No. Because you got hurt and you come home crying. But a kid forgets, forgives, forgets. They want to go on. They're resilient. Things can happen to them and they can just jump up. A grown-up my age get a broke leg, they want all the pity in the world. <laughs> but a kid get a broke leg, what do they do? They want to go out playing with a broke leg. They're resilient. <laughs> they can keep on going. So that's the way the eagle is. But they say there's one thing that's happening. They're facing a threat, a threat from lead poisoning where they get shot. And this is killing many eagles. But you know what? In God's world, there's no lead poisoning. Right. There's no lead poisoning. So I want to say tonight, I want to be like that eagle. I want to be able to overcome 
every obstacle that comes against me. And I want to fly towards the storm and go high with Jesus. Don't run from the devil because it'll do you no good. You got to face up to him and tell him to get behind me. Use the word of God. Let's all live like the evil and fly high. Yeah. Thank you, Sister Terry. Yeah. On this, uh, you're so right because, uh, <laughs> yeah, I am. I've been mumbling around for the last two or three weeks. Oh, 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 oh. You know, we all do it. I also. But, uh, but yes, ma'am, you're so right. And uh, we appreciate that word. We really do. And and uh, we, we need to take heed to that. That's right. We need to we need to, to charge on. Not not turn around and ask, what can I do for you, devil? Can you leave me alone or whatever? Tell him to leave you alone and right. charge on to the sun. S O N. Yeah. S O N. So. All right. On that note, then we'll close out with prayer tonight. Um, Brother Hank, close it out. Father, we thank you for this uh, opportunity to come into your house tonight, Lord, but for the word that we heard from Sister Terry, Lord. Lord, we're just so grateful for all that you've done for us today, Lord. Lord, we just ask that you bless this message to our hearts, to our minds, Lord, and we'll retain it in our hearts, Lord, and, re and use it at the time that you need us to, to, uh, to use it, Lord, the way you would have us to do it. Lord, we just thank you for this week, thank you. Lord. We just thank you for the week that's coming. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, uh, for all that you've done for us, Lord. Lord, we just ask that you be with us now as we go through uh, the next few days later we get back in here Wednesday Lord but keep us all safe Lord keep us in your hand of protection Lord yes. guide us and direct us in all our decisions Lord and we give you all the praise the glory and the honor your precious name we pray Amen, Amen. 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 Thank you Thank you Y'all yeah. have a good evening and uh, drive safe behave yourself well yeah, she, she can't <laughs> oh wait a minute, what did it say? You point, you got what? Three more behind, yeah, pointing back right. at you, right? Yeah.